This is the Chorus Vertex 2. It features offline music, navigation and mapping, incredible battery life, and an all new GPS technology that aims to improve GPS accuracy. And all of those features combined make this watch Chorus's most impressive GPS multi-sport watch yet. In this video, I'm gonna share all of the brand new features in the Chorus Vertex 2 that make it so special, but I'm also gonna tell you about my experience using this watch as a daily driver from the past month. In this video, we're gonna focus on the new features in the Coros Vertex 2 and kind of glaze over the common features that you'd find in other Coros watches. Before we dive in, a quick disclaimer, Coros did provide the Coros Vertex 2 for the purpose of this video so I could test it out and share my thoughts with you. I've actually had the Coros Vertex 2 for over a month now, so I've got a pretty good amount of experience using this watch in daily life and also in my activities. Okay, first up, let's talk about the unboxing experience because as with the Vertex 1, it's pretty special. <laughs> so if if any of you are familiar with the original Coros Vertex, it shipped in this absolutely ridiculous uh, flight case, which was totally overkill. Uh, there's no reason to put a watch in this thing, but it definitely turned a lot of heads when they made that move and included this in the box with the purchase of every Vertex sold. And if you are impressed by the Coros Vertex 1's flight case, I'm happy to report that they're still doing it today. So here's the box for the Vertex 2. And if you open up the box, you get another flight case. So this is the Coros Vertex 2 flight case here. I mean, don't get me wrong, this flight case is actually pretty cool. You can see here it's got the uh, Coros brand right there on the cover, and it's not the big chunky flight case they included with the Vertex 1. You can see here the Vertex 2's flight case is a little bit thinner, it's a little bit more minimal, which is good because this packaging definitely adds to the price, which we'll talk about a little later on in this video, but it's not cheap. The original Vertex 1 had this like clamshell style flight case case that had a bunch of extra room in it, obviously, because it's a watch and it was in this big flight case. Uh, so that's what the inside looked like. Coros Vertex 2's flight case is a little different. It's got this kind of uh, lever latch on the front. And then when you open it up, you can see inside, I've got another Coros Vertex 2 inside. But this is not a flight case review. So I'm gonna put these aside and we're gonna focus on the watch now. Does that sound good? Let's do that. Well, hello there. Are you enjoying this video? If you are, maybe go click that like and subscribe button down below because it really helps out my channel. Also, check out the links in description. Okay, back to the video. Okay, let's talk about the hardware first. You can see here I've got two flavors of the Coros Vertex 2. On the left here, I've got the black and gray. I don't actually know what they call this as a color, but I'm gonna guess it's called slate or something like that. And then on the right here, I've got the lava color, which I really like. It's got this orange band and a silver bezel with a gray body, which is really, really nice and attractive looking. And to give you a close up of those colors, here's the uh, slate on the left and the lava color on the right here. The big change on the Coros Vertex 2 that you've might've noticed so far is the size of the watch. It is much larger than any of the watches they've made previously. And by comparison, if we look at the older Coros Vertex 1, you can see that it's significantly bigger. And the original Coros Vertex 1 is not a small watch by any stretch of the imagination. And one important thing to note about the Coros Vertex 2 is that the original Coros Vertex 1 is not being replaced or obsoleted or anything like that. The Coros Vertex 2 is simply another option for people who want more features in their watch that the Coros Vertex 1 didn't have. But if I compare it to something like the Garmin Fenix 6X or the Garmin Enduro in this case, you can see that they're very similar in size. The Coros Vertex 2 comes in at a pretty hefty 91 grams, but because it is kind of a low profile watch, I find it to be pretty comfortable on my wrist and I haven't really had an issue sleeping with this thing, wearing it every day, seven days a week. And if you're curious what it looks like on my men's 165 millimeter circumference wrist, you can see it here. This is what the watch looks like on my wrist. Because this is a bigger watch, we've got a 1.4 inch display on the Coros Vertex 2, which is much bigger than the original 1.2 inch display on the Vertex 1. And just like before, this is a touch enabled transflective display, which means in certain settings throughout the watch, you can actually drag your finger on the screen and change things, but in regular day-to-day -day life, you can't actually swipe up and down to scroll through the widgets of the watch. However, this touch display does come in handy when it comes to navigation, and we'll talk about that a little later on in this video. In terms of raw build quality on the Coros Vertex 2, it's really impressive, just like the original Coros Vertex. You've got a titanium bezel around the front here, you've got a titanium backplate here, and you've got a sapphire crystal 
domed lens, which is really nice. The Coros Vertex 2, just like the original Vertex, is built ruggedly tough. So it's waterproof to a depth of 100 meters or 10 atmospheres. And it also has an operational temperature range of minus 22 Fahrenheit to plus 122 Fahrenheit, which is more than the competition. Around the left-hand side of the watch, you've got some holes exposed, and I believe those are for the altimeter and barometer. And then on the right-hand side, you've got the same layout as every other Coros watch, which is three buttons, and the middle button is a digital crown. So you can roll this to go up and down in the menu. You can also click this to select something. The included band with the Coros Vertex 2 is a 26 millimeter silicone band, and it's really comfortable. It's got a lot of stretch to it, so it can accommodate a lot of wrist types, and it is quick fit enabled, so you can actually use your thumb to disconnect it pop it off, put on a different color or different material, and it's pretty easy to do. If we flip the watch over, we can see that we're still using the Kuros proprietary USB charging cable that can be plugged in here. Next to that, we have an optical heart rate sensor and an SpO2 sensor to detect blood oxygen saturation. When it comes to the accuracy of the heart rate sensor on the back of the Kuros Vertex 2, I had mixed results. So for some reason in most of my runs, I had a low heart rate at the beginning of my run for a couple of minutes, and then eventually it would catch up to speed and stay Stabilize, but still though, it wasn't really perfect compared to a chest heart rate strap or an ECG strap. For the most part, the Coros Vertex 2 got pretty close to the Garmin Enduro once it caught up to speed, but at the beginning of most of my runs, like I said, it was just low and I can't explain that. Let's talk about what's new in the guts inside the Coros Vertex 2. First up is going to be the user interface. We've got this really cool watch face that comes installed on the Vertex 2. It's got like a topo uh, kind of contour line background, which is pretty cool. Now here's where things get pretty interesting on the Coros Vertex 2. They actually changed the user interface to look a lot like the competition. I'm not going to say what brand, but I think you can assume what it is. Uh, so you've got these kind of truncated widgets now throughout the menu system, where if you scroll the knob down, you can scroll through these widgets. For instance, I've got my calories burned for the day, my active time for the day, step count, floors climbed. I've got my Coros Evo Lab stats here, which is their training tool. If you want to learn more about Coros Evo Labs and their training tools, I'll link the video I made up here about that topic. We're not going to cover that in this video. Scrolling down, we get even more stats from our Evo Labs training tools. Then we've got our recovery advisor here, and it says I'm at 100% right now. And if I scroll further, you can see I've got all the other stats that were available on the older Coros watches. So here's the sunrise sunset widget. But like I said, before, they're all shrunken down to be a smaller widget so you can see more at a glance of your watch. Something that's totally new for the Coros Vertex 2 is the sleep widget that isn't on other Coros watches. This actually gives you your previous night's sleep duration. It also shows you your sleep stages and little lines. And then if you click on it, it gives you your sleep from the past seven days. Unfortunately, I had to reset this watch last night for a firmware update, so I lost all of my seven day data, but you can use your imagination here. This is just showing one day on the seven day graph. In terms of activity profiles on the Coros Vertex 2, it's got you covered. You've got everything from running, indoor running, trail running, track running, etc. But you've also got more niche options like triathlon, multi-sport. You've got uh, kite surfing and speed surfing. You've got rock climbing, indoor rock climbing. There's a lot of activities on board the Chorus Vertex 2. If there isn't something here, uh, then you're doing something pretty unique. When it comes to activities though, there is one perk on the Chorus Vertex 2. And it's that because it's got a larger 1.4 inch display, you can fit more data on the screen. You can see if I start a run here, I've got up to eight data fields here where I can see my distance, my pace, anything I want that's fully customizable in the Coros app. And now I've got eight options to choose from. Previously on the older Coros watches, you only had up to six data fields per page. It's really nice to have the additional data you can see at a glance without scrolling through additional pages. Another change on the Coros Vertex 2 versus the original Vertex is going to be changes in connectivity. So on the original Vertex, we had Bluetooth connection. On the Coros Vertex 2, we also have Wi-Fi. You can see here in the menu, I've got an option for Wi-Fi. If I click in on that, I can go ahead and add a network. It'll search, it'll find the office network here. And now it's asking me for my password, which I have to enter in the Kuros app on my phone, and I'll do that now. And now that we're connected to the Wi-Fi network here below that, you can actually see firmware updates. So now firmware updates are gonna happen over the air automatically directly on the watch, which is pretty handy. They've got plans to implement the Wi-Fi in other aspects of the watch in the future. Another change on the Kuros Vertex 2 is an upgrade of the internal processor or CPU in the watch. It's going to be 20% faster than the original Kuros Vertex 1, and I can say, 
it feels like that. I mean, just scrolling around the watch, it's very fluid. There's no delays on anything. I can click in, I can go around, I can go to my history here, I can click into an activity. Everything just happens instantaneously. There's no lag, there's no loading. Okay, the next feature we're gonna talk about is integrated music storage and playback on the Kuros Vertex 2. And this is the first time Kuros has done this. You can see there's a new icon for music. If I click on that, you can see I've got summer upbeat music. And in the screen, I can actually use the touch screen to do various things like skip forward, skip backwards, or play or pause. Now, if I go to play this music, you can see here it's asking me to connect to some earbuds. So I'll start up the pairing process on my Jaybird Vista 2s here. I've had no issues pairing the Chorus Vertex 2 up with my Jaybird Vista 2s here. The connection seems pretty stable and yeah, it works. Now there is one big limitation with the Chorus Vertex 2 in music playback and it's that it's only compatible with MP3s right now and you have to manually put the MP3s on the watch using your USB cable in your computer. This can't be done through the app. It's not compatible with you know, Apple Music or Spotify or YouTube Music or iHeartRadio. None of those things work with the Chorus Vertex 2. It's simply an MP3 player that's built into the watch. And on the back end, there is up to 32 gigabytes of storage on the Chorus Vertex 2 that is accessible over USB. You simply drag and drop your music on there and you can play them on the watch. Another new feature on the Chorus Vertex 2 is the built-in ECG, which is really cool. Electrocardiogram or ECG detects the electronic signals from your heart rate when your heart's pumping. This is generally way more accurate than something like the optical sensor on the back of the Kuros Vertex 2. To use the ECG sensor on the Kuros Vertex 2, you simply put the watch on. And now within the quick menu on the watch, you'll find a new option for HRV test. If I click on that, it'll tell me to sit still and relax. It'll also tell me to touch the bezel with my finger because it needs two points of contact. And as you can see here, it's picking up my heart rate using ECG, which is really cool. This process takes about a minute. You're supposed to stay completely still for it, which I'm not right now. And it gives you your HRV results at the end. I'm gonna let this finish and then we'll look at the results. I'm trying to stay still. All right, there we go. I've got an HRV of 58 and it says my stress level is low, which I don't feel like that's true. The next new feature I wanna talk about on the Kuros Vertex 2 is Insta360 camera controls. This is something that was really unexpected for me, but actually pretty cool. If you're unfamiliar with Insta360, it's actually a brand that makes action cameras. And I've actually got some videos about these action cameras on my channel if you wanna check them out. And what's interesting about the Kuros Vertex 2 is that you can actually control these cameras from the watch now. So if we power on my Insta360 X2 here, and then we go to the quick menu on our Kuros Vertex 2 here, you'll see a new menu for Insta360 control. If I click on that, it'll ask me to ask if I wanna add a camera, which I'll say yes. Now it's searching for a camera. And now you can see here, it shows that I'm in video mode on the Insta360 X2, which is true. And if I click the digital crown here, you should hear my camera starting to record. You can do this remotely from your watch without having to touch your camera. I can see this feature being really handy for people who use helmet cameras and you can't really feel where the button is, or maybe you've got your camera mounted to an ATV or out on a selfie stick or something. Now you can turn the camera on and off right from your watch and start and stop recording remotely, which is really cool. It's something I'll use personally. This was not expected. Uh, it's pretty cool to see that Coros partnered with Insta360 to make this happen. Okay, we've covered a lot of features on the Coros Vertex 2 so far. Some of them exciting, some of them like camera controls maybe not exciting for you I guarantee the rest of the stuff in this video is gonna be very exciting. Coros now offers full-blown global offline mapping in the Coros Vertex 2 already installed, ready to go. Those are words I never thought I would say, but uh, the day has come. As you can see here, this is not just breadcrumb navigation. Uh, so you've got roads, you've got highways, you've got waterways here, you've got trails, and they're all on a map that you can actually zoom in and out of using the digital knob, which is pretty cool. So if I roll forward, I zoom in. If I roll back, I zoom out. And the best part about this mapping experience is that you can actually use the touch screen here. So I can scroll around the map just touching it with my finger. This is way easier to do than some of the competitors that use like button combinations to pan left and right and zoom in and out. Using the crown to zoom and touching it to uh, pan around is really nice. Now, before you get too excited about the mapping features on the Kuros Vertex 2, 
there are some limitations here. These are not rootable maps. So you can't like put in an address or a point of interest or like the peak of a mountain and have the watch generate a course to get to that point. That simply doesn't happen here. The mapping on the Corus Vertex 2 is basically just for context. So if you're coming up to a trail junction and you wanna know if you should go left or right to get to that mountain over there, you can kind of glance at the map and figure it out. And just like before, the Corus Vertex 2 is compatible with GPX course navigation. So you can upload a GPX file to the course app, upload it to the watch and display that course on the map and having the course overlaid on a real map with you know all of the other information like water and trails and stuff it's just way more valuable to have all of that context around you the map is also really helpful when you use the back to start feature that's on the course vertex 2 if you run out you get a little bit lost you can click back to start and the watch will like retrace your step steps right to the beginning of your activity overall i wish the mapping was a little bit more robust and had like rootable maps and points of interest and waypoints and all that. It's not that, but it is still really cool and I'm glad to see them moving in the right direction here. The mapping experience is somewhat customizable at this point. If you drop into the settings, you can find map settings here and we've got landscape, topo, and hybrid, which is kind of a mix of landscape and topo. And then below that, we've got no map. So if you wanna have breadcrumb navigation, like the older Coros watches, you can do that on the Vertex 2. Although I really like the map, why would you turn it off? Hey gang, Future Dave here. Uh, just a quick update on the topo maps on the Coros Vertex 2. Uh, it turns out that Coros is actually going to be updating the firmware on the Coros Vertex 1 and the Coros Apex Pro to also have the topo maps. So not only does the Vertex 2 get them, but also so those older models will also get the topo maps. Okay, back to the video. Another big new feature on the Coros Vertex 2, which is kind of the standout feature about this watch, is that it's the first watch on the market, no other watch has it, to feature dual frequency GPS. What this results in is just way better GPS accuracy. Coros says this is most beneficial in a few situations, like if you're hiking next to a cliff line, or maybe you're in a, a slot canyon where you've got a little opening above you and not great GPS positioning there, or if you're actually in a big city with tall skyscrapers that are blocking your GPS signal. Now you've got the ability to pick up more satellites at a time. So let's talk about my experience with this new GPS dual frequency system. It's been pretty good, but it's really only advantageous in certain situations. I went on a bunch of runs with my Garmin Enduro, the Coros Pace 2, and my iPhone 12 Pro for a baseline of comparison. So to really push the limits of the dual frequency technology in the Coros Vertex 2, I went to a local trail that's got a bunch of big cliffs, it's got some waterfalls that are really tall. Uh, it's definitely not like the Grand Canyon, but it's the best I can do around here with these big granite rocks all around me. In this particular area, I've always had trouble getting a really clean GPS track. So I went on a run, I did an out and back activity so I could see how the lines stack up on top of each other. And I gotta say the GPS dual frequency technology in the Corus Vertex 2 definitely proved that it worked. So even though the tracks weren't perfect on that out and back activity in the woods with all the big granite rocks around me, I can say that the Vertex 2 had a much cleaner track than the Garmin Enduro and the iPhone 12 Pro. So this new dual frequency technology is really cool. Uh, of course, is the first to do it, but I expect that we'll be seeing this kind of technology from the competitors probably pretty soon. But it does have one limitation and that's gonna be battery life. Now, don't get me wrong, even though I said the dual frequency kills the battery life, it doesn't kill it enough to be bad. The battery life on the Corus Vertex 2 is still mind blowing. First of all, let's talk about standby battery life. We get up to you two months of standby battery life. So that's using it as a smartwatch, you know, reading your phone notification, just living your life. You can go two months with this watch without charging. Next up, we've got standard GPS mode. Get this. 135 hours in standard GPS mode. If we go to dual frequency GPS mode, that's the best accuracy, up to 50 hours of GPS battery life. That is awesome. And of course, they still have the ultra max mode on the Coros Vertex 2, and I don't know why, but if you opt to use that, you can get up to 240 hours of battery life in GPS mode on the Coros Vertex 2. That is at the sacrifice of a bunch of GPS accuracy. I don't see why anyone would use that. Okay, let's talk about the price of the Coros Vertex 2. Can't believe I got this far without talking about the price. $699 here in the US. That might differ where you are in the world, but that's what it is here. And $699 is a ton of money. Don't get me wrong. 
However, when we take a look at something like the Coros Vertex 1 that I have here, this comes in at $599. So for a hundred bucks more, you get more battery life, you get that built-in music, you get mapping, you get a whole bunch of other features. Um, yeah, it's a better watch all around for a hundred bucks more. And I think if you're trying to decide between the two, I would just go for the Chorus Vertex 2 if you can swing that hundred extra bucks. Because really, neither of these watches are cheap, and if you're already at this level, what's a hundred dollars more? And again, if we look at the competition, like this Garmin Enduro that I have here, the Garmin Enduro comes in at $799, and $899 if you go for the titanium version. The Chorus Vertex 2 is one to two hundred dollars cheaper, and it has more features. You've got Wi-Fi, maps, music, that's all built into the Chorus Vertex 2, not on the Enduro. Not only that, the Chorus Vertex 2 has better battery life than the Garmin Enduro, and that's something I never thought I would say because the Enduro is no slouch there either. So yeah, $699 is a ton of money, I'm not denying that, but you're getting a lot for your money here and it's a pretty impressive watch. And now I wanna hear from you. What do you think of the Chorus Vertex 2? Are you in the market for something like this? Is $699 too much for you? Let me know in the comments down below. I really wanna hear from you. And that pretty much wraps it up for the Chorus Vertex 2, the new features, what I think about it so far. It's a pretty awesome watch. There is a bunch of other stuff in this watch to cover, but in this video, it's getting too long just talking about the new stuff. So that'll have to wait for another video. If you found this video helpful, entertaining, fun, educational, any of those things, please consider subscribing to the channel and giving me a thumbs up down below. It really helps me out. Also, if you're planning to pick up a Coros Vertex 2, if you get the money for this thing, I will have links down in the description that do help support my channel, but they cost nothing extra to you. So please use them. Finally, if you want more content from my channel, you wanna see some behind the scenes stuff or what it's like to test out these watches in the background, check out the Patreon link down below. That helps out my channel as well. And I deliver a bunch of other content there. So check that out if you're interested. Okay, I think that's everything. I probably missed something. If I did, make sure you comment down below to let me know what it was, and I'll see you next time. Bye!